Okay, this is going to be Strong Vincent at Gettysburg, here on Gettysburg Historic Walking Tours. And Strong Vincent was born on June the 17th, 1837. He died in Gettysburg on July 7th, 1863, after being mortally wounded. Now, he was a lawyer who became famous as a U.S. Army officer during the American Civil War. He was mortally wounded while leading his brigade during the fighting on Little Round Top on the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg, and he died five days later at the Lewis Bushman Farm. He was born in Waterford, Pennsylvania, son of an iron foundry man named B. Vincent and his wife, Sarah Ann Strong. He attended Trinity College and Harvard University, graduating in 1859. He practiced law in Erie, Pennsylvania, now, at the start of the American Civil War, Vincent joined the Pennsylvania militia as an adjutant and first lieutenant of the Erie Regiment. On September 14, 1861, he was commissioned lieutenant colonel of the 83rd Pennsylvania Infantry, which is monument we are here at now. He was promoted to colonel the following June after the death of his regimental commander at the Seven Days Battle, Gaines Mills. He assumed command of the regiment and developed malaria on the Virginia Peninsula. It was on medical leave until the Battle of Fredericksburg in December of 1862. On May 30th, 1863, assumed command of the 3rd Brigade, 1st Division, 5th Corps of the Army of the Potomac, replacing his brigade commander who resigned after the battle and the disaster at Chancellorsville. At the battle here at Gettysburg, the 26-year-old Vincent and his brigade arrived on July 2nd, 1863. He had started the Gettysburg campaign knowing that his young wife, Elizabeth Carter, whom he married on the day he enlisted, was pregnant with their first child. And he had written her, stating, If I fall, remember, you have given your husband to the most righteous cause that ever widowed a woman. Now, Major Daniel Sickles of the Third Corps had deviated from his orders, moving his corps to a position that left the undefended significant terrain feature of Little Round Top empty. Chief Engineer Brigadier General Governor K. Warren recognized the tactical importance of the hill and urgently sought Union troops to occupy it before the Confederates could. He sent a staff officer and they encountered Vincent and his brigade nearby in a little farm lane of George Weikert. Vincent said, I'll take the responsibility to take my brigade there. Private Oliver Wilcox Norton, his standard bearer and bugler, later wrote that he and Vincent made a reconnaissance of the Confederate forces as the brigade was moving into position. While our line was forming, he wrote, on the hill at Gettysburg, I came out with him in full view of the position. While our line, they opened up two batteries on us on our line firing at the colors and Vincent looked to see what was drawing the fire looked at me and said down with the flag Norton damn it go behind the rocks with it and it was these rocks on top of this hill that we're looking at now where you see the castle there in the distance that Vincent was standing right here now he was standing and he mounted a large boulder and he brandished a riding crop which is like a whip given to him by his wife and shouted to his men don't give an inch a bullet struck him through the thigh and groin and he fell due to the determination of the 20th maine 44th new york 83rd pennsylvania and 16th michigan infantry the union line held against the confederate onslaught vincent was carried from this boulder i stand on now uh, off to the side of the hill and then to a nearby farm of Louis Adolphus Bushman, where he lay dying for the next five days, unable to be transported due home to the severity of the injury. And on this video, we're going to take a look at the terrain where Vincent was here at Gettysburg. Of course, we're standing here on the rock. And later on, this rock actually had a carving that was placed in it. It's one of the oldest rock carvings in Gettysburg. And it states that Colonel Strong Vincent fell here mortally wounded on July 2nd of 1863. And I want you to notice it says Colonel Strong Vincent on this rock. Now, what happened from this very rock, Vincent standing up here, 
Um, his flags have been behind the rocks here, drawing fire. And he yells, don't give an inch to his men. He's wounded mortally. Knowing this, his men want to get him out of the heavy rate of fire. So they begin to carry him on a stretcher off to the side of the hill where he would be taken to basically what is a triage field hospital. And at that triage field hospital, they would examine Colonel Strong Vincent and they would realize that he was mortally wounded and that the chance of survival was next to none. And then he would need uh, more specific uh, nursing and doctoring. So he would need to be taken to a field hospital. So again, he's taken off this, the top of Little Round Top and in the direction that we're headed in now. Now, when we get down to this next marker, you're going to see uh, a discrepancy. It's going to say General Strong Vincent was wounded here. So you have wounded here at the top of the hill near the ca castle. And then, the, and then you have uh, Brigadier General, not Colonel, but wounded here on July 2nd. He can't be wounded in two spots. Most likely what happened was he was uh, wounded as a colonel at the top of the hill and then taken to this position right here where we now stand, where this marker is. Um, and he was observed for the first time uh, basically as a triage. Um, and here, this is where they determine that he was in really bad shape. Now, again... Um, before his death, just a day before his death, General Meade promoted him to Brigadier General. So the marker that we see down here has his promoted rank of Brigadier General. And it says, General Strong Vincent, wounded July 2nd, died July 7th. And in this area over here where the Vincent's Brigade marker is, uh, would have been the area that they took him to next. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at that before heading uh, further toward the Towny Town Road. Now, here we are at the Vincent Brigade marker here, just uh, just a little distance from where we were at. And it mentions Colonel Strong Vincent and the members of of his brigade. And we already went through earlier in an earlier part, the regiments that were in his brigade, which are also listed here on this brigade marker. Now from this brigade marker, the mortally wounded Vincent, uh, would have been, uh, taken eastward toward the Tanny town road and toward the, um, Weikert farm. Now, when they got to that farm, they realized that there were way too many people there. It was a huge field hospital. Actually, Tilly Pierce was there, and there were several high-ranking colonels and generals already either there dying or had died already. Um, and it was impossible for Vincent to get the care that he needed right here at this farm. Tilly Pierce was actually at this farm uh, working on men. The barn was being used as a field hospital. Uh, there were colonels and generals on the porch of this house here. And behind it is Little Round Top. So Strong Vincent is, is now heading eastward past this farm, uh, which sits here on the Tawny Town Road. Now from Little Round Top to this point, to this farm, uh, is about a half a mile. And General Vincent would be taken another half of a mile eastbound to the farm that would be owned by a man named Louis Adolphus Bushman. Now, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Louis Adolf Adolphus Bushman here. And his farm is in the distance beyond this tree, about another half to three quarters of a mile. I'll try to zoom in on it when I see the house and the barn. Now, Louis Adolphus Bushman was a constable in Straban Township. Um, his farm was used as a Civil War hospital for some Fifth Corps uh, soldiers. Um, and 
Lewis was born on Independence Day, July 4th, 1833, in Cumberland Township, Adams County, Pennsylvania. Uh, one of George's children was Lewis Bushman, and that's this uh, farm owner. And Lewis was living in this farm with his wife, Carolyn, who, like Vincent's wife, was also pregnant. He was also living here with his son, George Joseph Bushman, who was just a baby, had been born in July of 1861. Um, now, Carolyn, the wife of Louis Adolphus Bushman, um, when Strong Vincent uh, was taken to her property, um, she was the one that gave him the care in the upstairs room until he died on July 7th of 1863 she herself being pregnant and of course on September the 29th 1863 she um was she had given birth to a son herself and she named that son Strong Vincent Bushman so there's a little bit of a story in and of itself uh, Vincent is now being carried another half a mile across this field in an eastbound direction. And we're going to go ahead um, in a little while, and we're going to go to the current Route 15 highway. And we're going to take a sneak peek at the Lewis Adolphus, Adolphus Bushman Farm. So they're carrying him uh, here uh, eastbound across these fields. They had already crossed the Tawny Town Pike. Um, and they are heading directly toward a farm which isn't being occupied by a lot of soldiers at this point. And that would be the farm of Lewis Adolphus Bushman, either carried here in the open field or maybe along a, a tree line where there's a creek uh, bed for some water. And again, you can see the farm. And in the background, you can see Big Round Top to the left, and behind the farm would be Little Round Top. So there's Big Round Top there, and then just behind the Weikert Farm is Little Round Top in the distance, where uh, Colonel Strong Vincent was carried mortally wounded uh, in this direction on July 2nd of 1863. And again, where I'm pointing now is Little Round Top, where Strong Vincent uh, was mortally wounded uh, on July 2nd as he led his brigade. And then I'm pointing now in an eastbound direction toward the Lewis Adolphus Bushman Farm. And I'm going to zoom in here. You'll see the top of the original barn. The original barn does stand. The house does not. The house sat behind the barn at one point. Um, it was torn down, and then just after the American Civil War, a brick house was built. And we'll take a look at that uh, in our next part. Now, here we are at current day uh, 15, and our last video was shot in this direction. You can see Big Round Top here in the distance, and just to the right, Little Round Top. Um, and Strong Vincent uh, is being carried on a litter by probably some of his close associates of his brigade uh, in this direction, uh, which would be eastbound toward the Lewis Adolphus Bushman farm. Now, at this farm is his wife, Carolyn, who is pregnant. Um, and the house that you see there in the distance is not the original house. That's a brick house that was uh, built just after the Civil War, but just behind that house is the original barn that was on the site. In a later video, we're actually going to go on to the property. It's private property, but I've received permission to go on that property and show you exactly the site where uh, Strong Vincent was carried to, where the house once stood, and where he died on July 7th, 1863. So again, this has been a video called Strong Vincent at Gettysburg. And I am your historian, Frank Patrick Marone Jr., here on Gettysburg Historic Walking Tour. Okay, this is going to be our final part of Strong Vincent at Gettysburg. And I am here on the Levi Bushman Farm. 
And it was here that General Strong Vincent, and I say General because he would be promoted on this property just before his death. Now, as we looked at in our previous video, Strong Vincent was wounded on Little Round Top, which is directly in front of us. He was carried directly straight in this direction, across the Tawny Town Road and the fields that are in front of us. Of course, modern day Route 15 was not here, so his body would have been carried straight along here and to a house that once stood behind where the current day house is there. Now that house is a post-war house, but Vincent died in the house here on July the 7th of 1863. And it was here that General George Gordon Meade, after hearing of his bravery, promoted him to a Brigadier General. Vincent would die on July 7th, 1863, here on the Levi Bushman farm as a Brigadier General. And we're gonna take a, a walk over to the post-war house. And again, this house was not here during the battle. It was built a few years after the battle. And of course, this is private property. And I did receive permission, as you can hear the lawnmower uh, in the background, to come here and take pictures and shoot some video. Um, but Strong Vincent died on this property. And next to this barn, which is the original Levi Bushman barn. Now, the house that he died in used to sit right here next to the barn. And actually you can see some foundational stones. So as I move here to aim at the barn, I am standing on what would have been the Levi Bushman house from the Civil War. And he died in the second floor, so just about where my camera is facing now uh, is where Strong Vincent passed away on July 7th, 1863. I hope that you've enjoyed this series on Strong Vincent and that we've done some honor to this wonderful soldier. This has been Strong Vincent at Gettysburg, here on Gettysburg Historic Walking Tours with Frank P. Marone, Jr. Of Strong Vincent at Gettysburg, we are looking at the original Levi Bushman barn here. And in the distance over here, of course, you can see the round tops and the area from whence Colonel then later Strong Vincent, General, Brigadier General Strong Vincent was carried here on July 3rd, 1863. He was brought onto the farm. The barn was being used as a field hospital. And just to the left back side of the barn, over here where these groups and cluster of trees was, was a house that was the original Levi Bushman house. Just a few years after the battle, the modern 1870s Levi Bushman house uh, was built. But this is where the original house was that Strong Vincent died. And this is the barn, the original Civil War barn with the bank still on the property of Levi Bushman. And this is an in-depth look at something that you generally don't get to look at because it is private property. And I was able to receive permission to come here and film and take some pictures.
one at the, the back side of the original Levi Bushman barn and the house site which stood right there where those trees are at. Now one thing I did want to mention as well was that Levi had a neighbor named Michael Denner and I will do a video in the future on Michael Denner but Michael Denner lived near Hospital Road and you could see his barn there in the distance just beyond those trees. He was a neighbor of Le Levi Bushman, and it was Bushman's farm where uh, Colonel Strong Vincent, who would later become Brigadier General Strong Vincent, would be carried. Right here in this pile of rubble where the house once stood. And you can still see a few of the foundation rocks over here on the ground. And again, I did receive permission to do some pictures and filming here today, which I'm grateful for, because this is a spot not many people get to see or visit. Okay, and here we are again at the, the back side of the original Levi Bushman barn and the house site which stood right there where those trees are at. Now one thing I did want to mention as well was that Levi had a neighbor named Michael Denner and I will do a video in the future on Michael Denner but Michael Denner lived near Hospital Road and you could see his barn there in the distance just beyond those trees. He was a neighbor of Le Levi Bushman, and it was Bushman's farm where uh, Colonel Strong Vincent, who would later become Brigadier General Strong Vincent, would be carried. Right here in this pile of rubble where the house once stood. And you can still see a few of the foundation rocks over here on the ground. And again, I did receive permission to do some pictures and filming here today, which I'm grateful for, because this is a spot not many people get to see or visit.